right, guys, we are at the Tournament of Champions. We are in Fairlawn or Akron, Ohio at AMF Riviera Lanes. They are currently practicing for the PTQ round of qualifying of this tournament. So if you didn't know, the Tournament of Champions does have a PTQ. It allows any regional champion to participate to be able to make their way into the main field. Currently out of this field, I think there's 54 bowlers or 55 bowlers that are going to be taking nine places going into the Tournament of Champions. So nine bowlers today, eight games, make it through. So let's see who has the might to be able to make it into the biggest tournament of the year outside of the other majors. After game one, we have Nick Pate currently leading at plus 88, and that was obviously with a 288 game. And then the current cut number at ninth is a plus 35, who is J.R. Raymond. In between those guys, we have Kevin McCune, Matt Kuba, Anthony Leverspar, Tim Piper, Zach Tackett, AJ Chapman, and Ryan Lane. We do have a few people that are kind of hovering close to that cut line. Again, it's just one game in. A lot can happen. There's definitely a ton of friction. We're seeing a ton of urethane balls go down the lane. We've seen a lot of people split. We've seen a lot of people open. We've seen a lot of missed spares. This is not easy. They're bowling on Harry Smith, which is 41 feet in length. And there's quite a bit of friction. These HPL lanes in AMF centers definitely always hook a ton. And this is one of the most historic buildings in the scene of bowling. So there's a lot of friction. And the guys are just trying to manage that. Definitely can still play pretty tricky pair to pair. Again, a lot of different styles of bowlers out here, which is the key about all of this is there's so many different styles that anything can possibly change at any given point. So on to the next game. After 
two games, we have Nick Pay currently taking the lead still at plus 146. So he's leading the field by almost 70 pounds currently. We have Carlos, Carlos Granados, who shot 216, 258 to jump into plus 74 for the cut over. Then we have Craig LeMond at 223, 248 at plus 71. Patrick Dombrowski at plus 65. Matt Kuba at plus 62. Benji Martinez at plus 60. Tim Grandler at plus 59. Brandon Novak who jumped into eighth at plus 54. And then AJ Chapman currently at plus 53. So that is your top nine bowlers currently. Now, here is a little update. So. After they bowl the PTQ, they have to bowl the practice session for the actual main field event. Now, we do have a few bowlers that are currently injured and don't know if they're gonna actually be able to bowl the tournament champion. So I think Wes Malat is currently the current the person that is injured to an extent that he's not sure if he's gonna bowl or not. There's a couple injuries that he's dealing with. So he is gonna practice today and see if he's gonna actually bowl or not. And that will determine if we're actually gonna be taking 10 bowlers into the actual main field. So 10 bowlers have a chance still of making this number. But at the same time, we don't really know until later tonight after five or six o'clock at night. So here we go. Feel about that shot? Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Game four, we have an update. Nick Pate is currently leading at 236 over, which is absolutely massive. He is 100 pins ahead of AJ Chapman, who's in second, 141 over. Then we have Brandon Novak, Hacky, Frank Snodgrass, Craig Lamont, Dallas Leong, who jumped into that number. And we also have Gene Perez and Ryan Lane. And Ryan Lane is currently the cut number at plus 101. And then 10th and 11th place, we have Toby Sam Bueno and Tim Piper at 97 over and 91 over. So we have their through game five now. So two games to go. They still haven't updated game five scores, but two games to go. Plenty of things can happen. So let's see what goes on. Yay! That's a good one. It's pretty crazy what happens when you throw the right ball and create the right motion.
did not spare it. It was close though. Yeah, he is. For the TOC, we snuck in. We we got the last cash spot or the last advancer spot at 172. Over. Basically, had a Monday. You know, today was a Monday of all Mondays. I woke up, realized I didn't have my thumb that I've used for like five to seven years. To the bowling center, was hoping I could drill a new one, but that was a little complicated. And then ended up having to convert balls to a bigger it size to be able to use some of the thumbs that I did have. Unfortunately, I had to cut them down and, and a bunch of different things, so they didn't exactly feel very good. So game one, I missed the head pin five times. Not exactly throwing it the greatest because I couldn't clear the thumb. Um, did some work on the thumb in like frame eight, frame seven of game one and uh, found a way after 149 game one, being in, I'm pretty sure last, going like 220 over the last seven to be the number. So uh, now we get to bowl the TOC after a good week in Jackson, so. We'll, we'll kind of see what this has for us. Sweet. Awesome. Good balling, Cody. Thanks, buddy. All right, so uh, today went pretty well. Um, you know, kind of just game plan. I was looking at Purple Hammers, you know, to start because they were, you know, pretty flat. And bowling here, historically, Urethane's been really, really good. So just kind of coming in, I just knew stay patient, control what I could control. Uh, Purple looked really good on the fresh. Bowl 240 the first game with a bad shot into that split. And so, you know, fortunate to get out of there through a couple good shots, got out of the 10th frame, got a double. Next game, they transitioned a little bit. I had to move, uh, switch to a different purple hammer. And then at the, they got kind of funky in the middle, so I ended up going to reactive, got to switch into my one remix, one of my favorite balls right now. And uh, through the last five, I built 220 out and pulled pretty good the next the next two, bowled, uh, bowled 260, 230 with it. And then went to the next pair and the transition hit a little bit, front starting to go. So I got to go into my web pearl and bowled really good the last four. You know, when I get to throw the one and the web, transitions get super smooth and it's just easy. Those are like my two favorite balls, so it's easy to transition from one ball to the next one, and I have unlimited confidence pretty much when I get to throw those two balls. So it was a, it was a good day, fortunate, really good. Made a, made a couple small changes right before Jackson physically, and wasn't quite sharp enough as I needed to be. Scores were high that week, so it was tough to keep up. But uh, getting to bowl the regional this weekend and, and get some more reps in and then bowl today, feeling really, really good on, on first balls and excited for this week. And I think it's just more of that same thing, you know, this field is obviously crazy stacked. So getting, you know, getting the ball with all the champions and the nine guys that made it out today, all of regional champions, you know, there's no there's no scrubs this week. So it's, uh, it's I think it's gonna be important to control what I can control and stay patient. And I can just throw like I did today and then on Saturday I think we'll be we'll be just fine. Awesome. Thanks, AJ. Cool. Yeah.